Okay, uh, today's topic is uh, zone uh, systems. Uh, what you're looking at is a typical house air conditioner, and just to keep this uh, video length as short as possible, we're just going to be discussing a uh, single-story home with uh, with a uh, one air conditioner type setup. Um, basically, uh, you're looking at a three-bedroom home with uh, four generalized areas that can be zoned. Uh, the and each each area has a different temperature, and that's the whole purpose of putting in a zone uh, system is partly to better control temperature, and uh, also to gain some efficiency uh, attributes as well, potentially. Because uh, this current design that you're looking at right now is the highest utility consumption and operating cost with the least amount of comfort. Uh, per each individual uh, room or zone area. So with that said, let's move on to the next clip. And uh, here we show a air conditioner and heating with two zones set up. This is uh, for medium control. As you can see that we still lack the ability to control these far side rooms. Uh, the the uh, temperature hasn't really changed any and um, so basically it's just to the point to where you're only going to be able to control what you have a control in there to control with so in other words if you don't have a thermostat uh, in that zone that you want to control then you are only going to get what you got and uh, typically moving the thermostat isn't going to do anything for you it's just going to uh, potentially you know I mean if you moved it out of this area then it's basically going to raise that temperature it will you know if you're if you're moving it say for example you're wanting to move this this thermostat into here to raise this temperature it will raise that temperature but at the, at the detriment of this area this area will get hotter and same thing you know i mean if you move this thermostat over here you know it's really not going to do anything so the whole idea behind this is to increase comfort in each of the each of the four living areas within this uh, within this uh, structure. So that brings us to our next clip. This is a home air conditioner and heating system with three zones. Uh, this is for medium control because uh, you basically have three areas that you control. You have one fourth area, and if you've noticed, uh, the temperature dropped a little bit in this in this uh, particular part of the uh, structure. And uh, the reason for that is, is potentially a lot of times what we see is, is that when the house was built, you'll have a uh, heating or cooling system placed directly above these areas uh, in the attic or in a closet, in a hall closet. And uh, because the equipment is so close to these areas is typically the reason why you'll see lower temperatures in those areas because they're closer to the equipment therefore uh, negating uh, you know it takes a much longer time for the equipment to run in order to cool a big area like this and due to the fact that the equipment is further away from there it takes it longer to cool it down uh, other issues can come into play as well such as insulation and duct work and so on and so forth so with that said we go to the next clip this one uh, is showing it uh, for optimum control with four zones. Now, uh, one thing that's uh, important to note is that this is just a very basic setup, and it's designed to where it's going to maintain these temperatures throughout the day. Uh, there really is no uh, really is no programming per se. It's just you know run-of-the-mill thermostats that are just programmed just to maintain uh, temperatures. So there's while you get an optimum control for uh, for you know designating exact temperature in each of the in each of the zones, you don't gain any efficiency uh, per se because it's just either on or off still. So and that's important to note. Okay, this next setup is uh, basically taking into consideration a potential schedule of a household. 
Um, this would be more for a retirement type household possibly or uh, or potentially uh, somebody that's single and, and not yet married or so on and so forth. And the whole idea behind this is, is to gain some efficiency by putting in the four zone systems and controlling temperatures in parts of the structure that are unoccupied. These two rooms over here are basically unoccupied, so it doesn't make any sense to keep cooling those uh, down to uh, 78 degrees. You're paying for comfort that's just being wasted. I mean, it's like turning on a faucet over there and just letting the water run down the drain. You're not doing anything with it. So by putting in this zone, the zone would uh, would uh, maintain this 85 degree set point in both of these rooms, thus adding to greater efficiency. When those zones are shut off, these the the dwelling that is being occupied uh, basically attains a higher efficiency and more more comfort. Uh, better ability to keep those set points that you set uh, with much less energy usage. So with that said, we move on to the next uh, clip. This next clip uh, basically describes an active family, uh, you know, people that are living and maintaining each walling. Uh, this particular room uh, of the structure is uh, basically set up for somebody that uh, just pretty much just does nothing more than come home to sleep you know they're gone all day long so they set the temperature up at 85 degrees and have a specific set point as to what time uh, they want at 77 degrees and then it maintains that throughout the night uh, programmable thermostats have come a long way you can set it up to where uh, the thermostat will reach a specific temperature by a specific time and uh, the programmable thermostats do have the ability to learn the dwelling and um, one thing uh, another thing that's uh, good to note with this type of setup is is that each particular zone has its own programmable thermostats in other words you can basically program each thermostat uh, each thermostat or each zone area has its own program that is, uh, has the ability to run so it's not tied to any one specific main controller. That's very important to note. And uh, you know, if you have a uh, this this second zone is structured more for somebody that may be in and out uh, during the day, and so 85 degrees is just too warm to keep it because they have a fluctuating schedule. They're in and out potentially more than one or two times a day, and uh, and then it has a, uh, a a cooler setting at night that it operates, you know, when the occupant is there at night. Now, another uh, uh, another benefit of this type of setup is is that in this main part of the home, uh, you know, if you're trying to maintain, if you know, if you're in and out all day, you set at 80 degrees during the day to maintain that during the day. Uh, you come home to have dinner or whatever you're in there in the kitchen cooking or so on and so forth so you set it at a 75 degree setting in the evening to uh, compensate for you know cooking or getting together with friends and family to eat dinner but then at night when there's no one in this uh, area it doesn't make any sense to keep cooling this area overnight and therefore you raise that temperature to 85 degrees at nighttime when everyone is in their bedroom sleeping it basically increases the efficiency of each of the bedroom uh, zones to make them more comfortable and more energy efficient, thus directing the airflow that normally go to this area, redirects this airflow to the zones in which the people are in, as opposed to uh, running it unnecessarily in this zone overnight where there's no one in there to uh, maintain that comfort benefit. So with that said, uh, this is just an example. Uh, this is similar to what I've done to my house, and so this is my uh, current my current electric uh, usage uh, as of last year. This is my high bill because uh, basically, in order to get your air conditioning consumption to know what you're paying for air conditioning, you just take your high bill minus your low bill, and this is a 31-day uh, billing period from uh, June 1st, 2012 to January or to July 2nd, 2012. 
have an overall rate of 13.8 cents a kilowatt hour. Total bill is 101.56. And my next bill is my low bill. Uh, the 31-day uh, billing period was from uh, October 30th, 2012 to November 30th, 2012. Uh, average price I paid was 15.5 cents a kilowatt hour. Total bill was $70.92. So if you take that from the previous bill, uh, I'm paying roughly uh, just under $31 per month for air conditioning which uh, is almost ridiculous, as you'll see on the next uh, chart coming up. Okay, this is the uh, utility rate uh, comparison chart. Um, basically, uh, you'll see what you pay your, your air conditioning to run based on your whatever your utility rate is, uh, based at 75 degrees, indoor set point, that's, and that's with a 95 degree outdoor ambient. Uh, and then this is your SEER rating uh, with your tonnage of equipment over on this side. Uh, now one thing uh, to note that I did in order to get this utility rate per kilowatt hour, what I did was I took my 13.8 kilowatt hour and added a 15.5 kilowatt hour because those were the two rates that I was charged on my light bill if you go back in the video. That uh, came 29.3 cents. I divided that by two to order to get my average uh, my average kilowatt per hour rate, which came to 14.65. And I up I uh, I uh, averaged that up to 14 to 14.7 cents kilowatt hour. Uh, it's based on uh, seven months. Uh, sometimes you know it could be eight months. <coughs> Now I put in a uh, an 18 sear uh, unit here, probably about five six years ago. So it gives you a general uh, overall consensus of what I should be paying versus what I actually am paying. Now one thing to note is, is that 18 sear is just you know running the equipment as a normal 18 sear unit without all the you know zone controls and everything else. You know I've got the zones. Uh, basically optimized to my own comfort use you know 75 degrees is probably a little on the low side but there are occasions where I do set it at 75 degrees so but I've got it optimally optimized for for my own personal tastes now you'll notice that my operating costs are less than $31 now if you look on the chart you'll notice that I'm off the chart I'm not anywhere on the chart uh, probably somewhere around 28, 29 sear, you know, maybe even 30, 30 plus sear. You know, who knows? Because you know, the chart doesn't go that high. But uh, compare your bill to compare your bill to mine, and you know, and then you should realize that uh, you know there's probably more that you can be doing. Uh, just realize that it's an investment. You know, you can't uh, you know put nothing into it and expect a whole lot out of it. You know, it, it requires you to do it right. And uh, and only then are you going to get are you going to recoup the money out of it. Now, if you approach it from the point of looking for a silver bullet or such and so forth, uh, you know, save your money and spend it on something else. That concludes our video segment on air conditioning and heating zone systems. We hope we've better informed you about your air conditioning and heating comfort needs. If you'd like more information and you're in the Katy and Cypress, Texas areas, you can give us a call at 832-475-6895. Or, for more information, you can visit us on our main website at www.austinairco.com. My name is Ray Austin. For that great Austin Air feeling, give us a call today. <laughs>